Um, so, good afternoon and welcome to the South West Regional BIM Hub. This is um, a post occupancy evaluation session of the R Block, and very glad that you're able to join us. This session is a follow on from a soft landing session that we did a few months ago. So, what we're going to do today is to try to do essentially a case study of the R Block. And we're going to use a soft landings and a post-occupancy kind of philosophy with that. So I'm going to start off and explain to you a little short recap about what soft landings is all about and the purpose of that, just so that we're not making any assumptions, OK? So the purpose of a soft landings approach, um, which the government have introduced as their preferred method, and they're looking to use this from sort of the 2016 point onwards. The primary aim of soft landings is something I think we probably agree is a good aim, which is about Im improving the performance of an asset. And we're saying asset because it's talking about buildings and infrastructure. And it is talking very much from an asset management perspective. So it is talking about and focusing on the performance of the building as an asset. Rather than focusing on the cost of design and construction, we're switching to focus more on the the level of cost in the, the use of the building. Okay. So part of the way of achieving that um, is through better handover, essentially better communication. Because we recognise, I think, that at the moment, the handover between um, post-completion is often inadequate for the building users. So that's, that's the basic reason behind soft landings. And the implication of that is really that we would need to do better engagement with users and with stakeholders up front to understand their needs. Okay. So these are some of the really basic principles. Soft landings in five seconds flat. One element of a soft landings approach is a post-occupancy evaluation, which is what we're going to look at doing today. And the purpose of that is to essentially optimise the design, focusing on how the building is being used. And this will mean looking at the benefits rather than the features. So a good example of that would be specifying a wind turbine for a school. If the wind turbine is then not turning, school clients have been known to use power to turn on the wind turbine to demonstrate to the children how the wind turbine works. Well, so we need to be really clear about the purpose of the wind turbine before we look at, at, at specifying it. Is it for um, the use of generating power or is it really to demonstrate what we can do to the, the students? So this is about specifying the, the benefits, the added value to the client rather than the features of a building. The implication of soft landings is it will mean designers staying in touch with a building for longer, and that's up to sort of three years post-completion to ensure that optimisation process can happen. And obviously this is likely to assist the client in kind of debugging the, the systems and getting used to, to operating their building. So it's, it's useful really that, that the team stays together and stays in contact, and that's useful for us as designers um, in getting feedback about how the buildings are operating. So that's what's going to be really useful about today. So the purpose of post-occupancy evaluation is a collaborative tool to make sure that assets perform, in this case buildings, and also to use a lessons learned approach. So part of the purpose of a post-occupancy evaluation is that it is open and that it is used in future projects. We've already seen that in the US, there's one case study um, regarding a hospital that they've the used a soft landings approach on, and that's openly available. Um, and you can also see some more case studies, for example, Bisria have published some within schools, and the MOJ have just literally published something available within the BIM task groups website. And these, both of them, the, the case studies, really show the benefits that are accrued for the client when using this approach. So it'd be really useful to, to have a read through. So what we're hoping to do today, um, rather than use a formal post-occupancy evaluation, which there is a pro forma available, we're going to use an informal approach and just have a really good dialogue about how the building's performing in use. Okay. So we're going to use three quite basic <coughs> questions, um, which we borrowed these from, from Hall Lee, so thank you to them. Um, and it's about, is the building working? Is the building working as it's designed? And how can the building work better? 
So what we're going to do in order to enable this is to get each of the different panel members here who've kindly agreed to speak today to explain their perspective on the building.